At the end of the theme for today's conversation, there's an exclamation mark and there's a question. So I read this to be a hint at perhaps a discomfort or even an embarrassment or maybe a bit of an ambivalence about money and power. Um, the exclamation mark on the other hand could mean that we, some of us are saying, yes, go girl, this is what we should be doing. Um, but do you think that there is an embarrassment that women are embarrassed about or ambivalent about power and money? Kanika? I'll go first. So, if I'm too passionate about this subject, it's because <laughs> I am, <laughs> as, a, as a banker in the house. Um, I guess for me, we are a society that is sort of trying to make its way out of sort of thousands of years of patriarchy, you know. Mm -hmm. 30 years ago, uh, you, as a woman, were seen as a minor, you know, and if your husband passed away, your kid would actually be seen as somebody who looks, your son would look after you. So I think that a lot of us still remember and are still reminded, I still have all these um, signs of success as a woman which are still very much linked to what is seen as feminine or what is branded as feminine. Um, so um, obviously just things like self-sacrifice, things like um, giving, being nurturing, and not, that's not saying that those things are not available to women, but there's almost an expectation to do that. Um, there's even a more dangerous one around beauty and sexiness. I can't believe that a half of a billion dollar couple, Beyonce, still has to sing naked to make money, you know? So we still come from all of those things. So what I'm saying is the reason why money and women, money and power is still a bit of a topic, you know, is because we still come from a society which still values what is seen as a brand of femininity. Okay. And it has evolved, but I think it's still potent, you know, um, because there's still a presumption of what this is what it is to be feminine. And because these things, these, to open up those, those identities require you to embody this in your own being. Um, I think you can't run away from the fact that we still live in a society that has a feminine identity, not as potent as it used to be, but it's still there and it's still not about, about money. It's still not about power and it's still not very much about, about money. It's still, it's still a particular identity that needs to be shared. So I do still think it's a question mark. It really is it's still something that has to be, uh, to be there. The last point I'd like to make is that I get completely shocked and infuriated that young women think they're not feminists. Mm -hmm. What is there about feminism that's not fantastic? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't understand why we don't have more bleeding heart feminists because mm -hmm. surely feminism is about equal of access to opportunities and equal access to identity, which is perhaps more important. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I think that because now, because the, 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 the sort of tools of oppression are a lot more subtle, and are perhaps um, perpetuated by women themselves, it does not mean that uh, our journey towards fullness of humanity is fully owned. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. That's very thoughtful. Wow. So it's about, um, on the one hand, it seemed to be anti-feminist, okay? It challenges the nurturing and the traditional mm -hmm. role of women. No, no, have you got some thoughts on this? <laughs> yes, I do. Um, um, I agree with uh, Funega in terms of the patriarchal society where we come from. And we're still in the patriarchal mm -hmm. society. And, and most of the things that she said about young women being afraid or don't want to identify with being feminist, which is actually a positive and not a negative. We got some of us, we got what we, we got because we decided to, to be feminists mm -hmm. and decided to stand up for ourselves mm -hmm. and stand up for other women. Mm -hmm. Because in most cases, you find that women are ambivalent about if people say that you look good or you look smart and start your stuff. It's like, and you say, yes, honey, I do look good, and I, I know I do. Mm -hmm. You know, people feel that you're boasting, or women are ambivalent, they're ashamed. There's a concept about the bag lady. Mm -hmm. Women are refusing to be the bag, as it B-A-G, mm -hmm. to be women identified with money. Mm -hmm. And that's a negative, it's a dysfunctional relationship women have with money. Mm -hmm. They're afraid because you'll hear that a person saying, uh, no, it's not because of me. You know, I'm this or who I am because of my partner or my husband. So I'm saying to women today, 
Stop being ambivalent. Mm -hmm. Take it back. Mm -hmm. Take your power and your control back. Mm -hmm. And be proud of who you are. When they say you look good and you have money, yes, I do have. And I'm counted among the few. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> Jillian, you know, as a financial coach, uh, what are the kinds of things that women seem to articulate if, if we're talking about ambivalence? Or what is it that they want to know about... Uh, um, that is important in, in, in empowering themselves? Well, with, with the power issue, I get a lot of phone calls. I'll phone women to, um, to start some financial planning or to inquire about their financial planning. And they will say, well, I need to speak to my husband first. Mm -hmm. And that happens so much. Even if they're earning the same as their husband, even if they're earning more, they don't want to take the responsibility of being head of the household. Mm -hmm. Single women, it's different because they are the head of the household. Uh, myself, I mean, I'm a tomboy. I had to have a stylist to make me look like this. <laughs> Seriously, I, I employed a stylist. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be sitting here in my tracksuit. <laughs> and yeah, that's a first for me. That was empowering myself. <laughs> um, so I've never had an issue with um, being a woman. You, you can't achieve this and you can't achieve that. And that has come mm. from my background. Um, mm. As you can hear, I'm English, so mm -hmm. it's slightly different to South Africans. My father, I was my, my father's son. Mm -hmm. I was the oldest daughter. Mm -hmm. And so I could do anything I wanted to do. So I've never had that issue. But in dealing with clients and with the general public, I've had a lot of people saying, you know, they don't, they don't want to give control away. Well, they don't want to give control away from their husbands. Mm -hmm. Husbands need to be seen. It's, it's the male ego. Mm -hmm. And then women have, as Oprah tells you, the disease to please. Mm -hmm. And they want to come second. They want to appear nice. And mm -hmm. they want to appear feminine. Yeah. Um, and in order to do that, they take a step back. Mm -hmm. And they shouldn't. Mm -hmm. I mean, they have nothing to be shy about. Mm -hmm. and, as, and you know what I've seen as well is if women are the breadwinners in the family, mm -hmm. um, they still look out for their husband's financial interest before their own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even if they're the ones, they don't call the shots. They can be earning, but they don't call the shots. Mm -hmm. So I see that a lot. Mm -hmm. So they're powerful yeah. attitudes and beliefs that hold us back, it seems. It, it, it is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Sure. Um, I battled to do this sitting down, but I'll try. <laughs> it was Pablo Picasso who said that there are only two types of women, goddesses and doormats. <coughs> do you agree with that? <laughs> I mean, it's a bit two-dimensional, yes. but what's in the middle? Is it a shade of beige? Do we all aspire to be that? No, of course we don't. <laughs> but how do you see yourself when you look in the mirror do you see a goddess? Or do you make apologies and say, oh, I'm so fat, or, you know? And what I've, what, the reason I'm raising this is because there's a direct link. All the research I've, ooh, all the research I've done for my Excuse books me. show that there's a direct link between your self-worth, your self-image, how you perceive yourself, and what you think you're worth. If you don't, you know, if you have a negative, and you might not realize you're even doing it to yourself, just think about how you talk to yourself in the mirror. Mm. If you don't see a positive link between you and your value, you don't ask for enough money. You don't ask for those um, salary increases. You know that men are four times more likely to ask to negotiate their first salary than women. Mm -hmm. And when we don't negotiate our first salary, it costs us by age 65, five million rand. I can't afford to throw that away. I don't know about you. <laughs> um, just on the subject of mm -hmm. feminism, I don't think we as women are going to empower ourselves by putting anyone down. Mm -hmm. This isn't about putting men down, it's about empowering women. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important for me, that we're not here by measuring our, ourselves against someone else. It's, we're here because we're powerful women. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. thank you. Now, Kim, that was very um, interesting what you said about how much we lose in lost earnings because of our uh, mm. perhaps inability to negotiate on our behalf. And when we do negotiate, we feel uncomfortable. Um, others look also, it's not acceptable for women to want to negotiate. And in your work on your 50 sort of secrets on deal making, what are some of the secrets you've got for, for women here today? Okay, um, I'm going to ask you some questions again, sorry. <laughs> Can you finish this sentence? 
To get what you want, you have to know what you want. And part of the problem is we don't think about what we want. We don't actually sit down. I'm not the financial planner, um, and I don't have the history in um, finance like um, the other people do. But to get what you want, you've got to know what you want. That's the first thing. So sit down and think about it. What do I want to earn? What do I want to own? You know, where do I want to be? And then, for me, this is something that we were born with and we've lost, is what's complete this sentence. If you don't ask, you don't get. get. And we don't ask. We don't ask for those increases. We don't tell people what we want, often because we don't know what we want. But if you want to get what you want in life, step one, ask for it. But there's another point you've got to remember. If you're asking, you've got to persuade the other person to give it to you. Otherwise, you've got to negotiate. Those are the two ways you're going to get what you want. So you can persuade or negotiate. But negotiation means you give somebody to get. And these are the two life skills you have to have as a person, never mind as a woman. But women seem particularly bad at them. We've got to practice it. As a coach, I mean, is that what you do? Yes. <laughs> I was just listening to her and thinking, now I know why I'm successful. Because <laughs> I ask. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely, you, you've got to know what you want, ask for it, mm -hmm. um, and take steps with yourself to, to get there. What do I need to do? I mean, I wanted a BCom many, many years ago. And uh, at the time, I was a single parent, sole breadwinner, um, and I didn't have... Well, I didn't have the BCom yet. So how can I get it? I don't have the money. I don't have the, mm -hmm. the time. So um, I decided, well, okay, every year I'll get my bonus and I will use that to pay for UNISA because UNISA was the cheapest university at the time. And I'm talking a long time ago anyway. Um, and that's what I did. I studied after hours, being a full-time parent and the sole breadwinner, mm -hmm. and then I paid it off every, every year. You know, so I had a clear goal. Yeah. That's, what I wanted. that's what I needed in order to progress through the... Uh, and, and every five years... I stopped and I thought, well, what do I need now? Where do I want to go now? And how do I need to get it? Mm -hmm. So in essence, being a single parent made me a financial planner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I just studied further until I got where I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yeah, you, you take control of that decision. Mm -hmm. You don't let it slip. You don't say, well, okay, hubby's going to be transferred or mm -hmm. my children need this first mm -hmm. or anything. Yes, they have to be taken into your um, considerations. Mm -hmm. But first and foremost, what do you want? And how are you going to get it? So what do, what do we think just from a banking side and an investment side? What are the kinds of skills that we, we lack? Um, and I mean, all of you can contribute to this from other members of the panel. But what is it in your work that you see women lack? Um, I'm with Kim here. I think the first thing is just, it all actually starts from, from the inside. And, and I think about how you see yourself as a human mm. being. When the global financial crisis hit in 2008 and 2009, we saw so many situations of women who found out that their house was being foreclosed, that was being repossessed on the morning of the house being repossessed. Because uh, absolutely no um, transparency or visibility around money in the household. Mm -hmm. And not that this person is a stay-at-home mom per se, it's just that there's just, you ask your husband to go, your husband will pay for the big stuff, cars, houses, and you pay for groceries and all the other mm. things. And there's absolutely no transparency of that. So I think for me, I think um, uh, self-determination, uh, you know, money is an energy and self-determination is an essential part of being a human being. And therefore you can't live in a house and drive a car or plan for retirement or plan if you don't if you, are, if you don't have access from that information. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think the first thing is just the courage to actually look into these matters mm -hmm. and not leave it up to someone else to look after your money. I think it happens a lot. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things. It's just the inability to actually look into, and to actually invest time and look into the financial affairs. That's what be one of mm -hmm. the skills. Mm -hmm. So it's information and, mm -hmm. and also taking initiative. Mm -hmm. I think also too that um, the most important thing is investing in yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, be selfish and invest and, and learn, and knowledge is very important. The skills going for, for 
But I'll make an example. When I came back from, I was teaching before, then I got a full bride and I, and I went to the US. When I came back, I was headhunted by, by Telcom. I didn't know anything about business. As a psychologist, I said, before I can do anything, I want to go to SBL. You know, because we're dealing with unions and negotiations and all those skills and all. When it comes to the home situation, mm -hmm. you know, I had unfortunate and uh, 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 personal experience where I had to let go mm -hmm. of my husband, my first husband, because of issues, the dynamics. It was like, now you've got a PhD, I don't have a PhD, mm -hmm. and now you have a man. And it was not that. Mm -hmm. It was not about it, it was, I was now in control. And I was just basically saying that I'm in control and this is what I'm going to do and this is what I'm going to learn. And then the, the other thing I remember we're fighting about was, you know, psychologically, was that we're going to live in Van der Bale Park. And where the opportunity, nothing. There was no Val Technicon there before. You know, I said, no, I want to go and live where I, I, live, I lived before. It's either with my parents in Katliwum or in Sprayview or in Bryanston where I had a townhouse. So you take decisions. And then for yourself first, women don't put themselves first. And it's very, very important. I, I was teaching, I taught March at university, and I'm very proud of her. And I went back to school and I got a Fulbright scholarship. And I spent 10 years in the United States. I did my master's and my doctorate. I came back, I said, Tell Telcom, you take me to school. I did my MBL with UNISA. Mm -hmm. And I added value. Mm -hmm. And that is what, how I feel. Mm -hmm. And I don't have to apologize to anybody. Mm -hmm. But sharpen the saw, ladies. Mm -hmm. Sharpen the saw. You'll never starve <laughs> if you educate yourselves and study, and you'll never be go cap in hand to anybody scratching where it doesn't itch. Hold it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, thank you. That's very empowering and inspiring to, to many of us. Um, so so decision-making seems to be as emerging very much as an important aspect of empowerment in, in financial matters. Um, I don't know if you've got anything to add. Just, just one or... more thing that's on my notes here. The divorce rate mm. is um, very high. Mm. And the reason it's high is because women are saying no. Mm. And that's a good thing. <laughs> divorce is not a good thing, but the fact that women are taking more power um, is reflecting in the divorces. Mm -hmm. So one step further, you need to, if you're married, if you're going to be getting married, you need to prepare for a day when maybe you don't want to be with that person anymore. And, and never give up your financial independence yes. mm -hmm. so that you can make the choice and not have to live uncomfortably on somebody else's money, mm -hmm. that you can do whatever you want to do, make your own choices. Um, I just wanted to ask the ladies, whose financial planning is to win the lottery? I mean, look inside. <laughs> is that how you're going to sustain yourself, get your financial independence? Or maybe some of you are young and saying, oh, I'm going to marry someone rich. Um, or, you know, do you believe in the law of attraction? If you ask every night, it's going to come. You've got to get a little bit more realistic than having these princess complexes. And that's why people like Jillian, are so important um, for all of us. Because we've got to get beyond that. We are our own worst enemy when we have these yes. silly little fantasies about money. Mm -hmm. But something I wanted to explore with, with the panel too is that you know financial services have become very complicated, mm. um, technological, um, very alienating. Um, and I mean, just for someone like me, I've, I find it's a huge challenge. Now, once also looking, thinking of people who are underbanked, the World Bank study says that about 12 million people in South Africa are unbanked, and many millions more are underbanked. And many of those would be women, I pre presume. The, um, not presume, the data also shows that there are more women who are unbanked and, and underbanked than, than the rest of the population. So what, what needs to happen in the whole, in, in empowering ourselves and negotiating our way through the whole complex world of financial services? Because um, I, I think that women are scared of that. Maybe. Yeah. So my experience around uh, women in the financial sector is that over and over again, 
the default rate, so the, the, the chances of a woman overpaying a loan back, for example, is much higher for of a woman than it is for a man. Fact. Fact. So women default rates are lower, and therefore women are more likely to get cheaper finance. Mm. But the real issue you write is the issue of excess. Mm. Is that, so when I have a business idea, and I want to start a business, and I'm looking for seed funding, mm. do I know where to go? Mm. Um, and do I, do I know that I can't approach a bank for seed funding? Mm. That's not what the bank does. I go to a bank much further down the line. I do think that there's still a channels, the channels of, informa of knowledge that that facilitate upward mobility. Because these are not the conversations we normally have. You know, you don't go hang out with your mates and discuss about actually, you know, I want to start this business. These are not the normal conversations mm -hmm. we have. Mm -hmm. I do think that the access to information mm -hmm. that enables us to access capital is still mm -hmm. a real big issue. In the rural areas, it's even worse. Mm -hmm. I mean, the biggest source of capital is property. And a lot of property in this country is untitled. Mm -hmm. So I might have a piece of land, or I might have, but I can't go to a bank and mortgage that and get money to take my kid to school or to take my money to start a business because there's a lot more untitled dwellings than there are. So there are these structural issues around capital formation and also around access to information because we simply are not, our social circles are generally not around those kinds of topics. Uh, so I do see those as barriers, but I can tell you that as financial services, I think there is a real recognition that it's better to lend to a family than to a man, and it is certainly better to lend to a woman yeah. in the house than it is to a woman. So women, when they want to, when they do look, are much better users of, 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 of debt. I did have an experience a year ago when I tried to buy a, an apartment, um, and I couldn't get a bond on my own from one of the big banks. Um, is this still happening? No. It happened to me in 2000, but that's not... So, <laughs> so I think the, the, the rules around whether you, a person qualify for, for a mortgage or, or not, um, I mean, as a person who runs those, those particular scorecards, mm. I would hope that all of us don't have a gender bias. Mm. So um, I personally would have loved to have a gender indicator in the scorecard mm. that runs credit because women do have better credit. Mm we're actually legally not allowed to do that. Okay. Um, so I do, th I do think that, and, and I don't want to answer this question no, since no, it's don't. you. Mm -mm. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, I think that um, it's, it's, um, to buy a home is t nowadays is different from what it used to be. So having an income does not mean you can afford a home. Mm -hmm. Nowadays we require that you put in a significant deposit mm -hmm. into buying a home. And this is not something that we've told our customers mm -hmm properly, so you need at least 20% of that. So uh, I'm hoping that in the system, things are just becoming, um, are becoming a lot more transparent, um, but I cannot obviously vouch for, for the entire system. But how can women advocate for themselves when this sort of thing happens? Because there, there was a, there, there was a, a problem here. Um, so what can we do? Is there, is there somebody in the bank that we go to, an ombudsman or a person that we can, can, can approach? Yeah, so if your loan is, is declined, you can take the decline or you can decide to go and, and fight mm. and go and arbitrate, you know. So um, we deal with a lot of, I think in, in all of the decline, when a customer comes back and say, I don't understand, mm -hmm. because you're running, because the tools that run that is, it's a computer, it's an algorithm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's not all the information that's okay. taken into account. So you do get that. So I think before you, I would actually encourage my customers to say, if you're declined for credit, insist on understanding why. Because if you don't understand why, what can you do? And it can't be about, no, the system said that. That's a rubbish answer. Mm -hmm. What is it that I can do differently so that I can come back in six months' time and be able to access that credit? Yeah. Excellent. So that's about deal making, isn't it, Kim? Yeah, it is. Um, a deal maker, the way I refer to it, is just somebody who knows what they want. They go out and get it. But in the process, so you'll go out and get it through, as I said earlier, persuading or negotiating or leveraging power. But the other party gets what they want too. I don't believe in the school of screw you. You know, mm -hmm. This is about long term and collaboration. Mm -hmm. um, but an interesting thing on deal making negotiation that I think maybe would help you going forward is buying property and how to get a really good deal on that. 
The first thing is don't get emotionally invested in the house you're buying. Mm. <laughs> and we as women tend to do that. Mm. You know, we've got to have it's the ho dream of, home of our dreams. Um, and also track your market. I haven't paid more than 50% of the asking price in buying a property yet. Mm. Because I'm not emotionally invested. So, mm. uh, you know, you choose the area, you find a house you can live, at, live in. And then that's it, and you make the proposals. But you've got to have information. You have no power if you don't have information. Mm. So in buying a property, you can be a great negotiator, but if you don't have the information you need to see, hold on, this mar the property's been on the market for quite a long time. Um, you know, they're probably desperate. Use the estate agents to give you information. Yeah. You know, dangle little carrots. I'll buy if you tell me this. And... Another thing with the banks is you've got to push for the best interest rate. They're not going to offer you their best, the, be, the deal that's best for you. They're going to offer you the deal that's best for them. For them. Sorry, Fineka, but you've got to look out for you. The bank ain't going to do it. The state agent isn't going to do it either. So decide, you know, push a little bit. But remember, to get what you want, you have to give the other guy something in return. So you might say to... Um, Standard Bank, we'll, I'll, you know, if you give me this reduced rate, I'll move all my banking to you. You've got to have something to yeah. offer to get what you want. But go for it. Try. Be cheeky. What have you got to lose? The worst is somebody says no. And, um, what does a six-year-old do if somebody says no to them? They just come back at you. Oh, well then, well, can I have this, mum? And can we do that, mum? Remember your inner six-year-old. We've all got one inside. <laughs> Thank goodness. Mm, lovely. No, no. I, I just wanted to say thank you. I just want to say the, the, I wanted to clarify mm. the Van der Bale part. part. Mm. By <laughs> the way, the ex was saying we're going to live, we're coming back from the States, we're going to live with my mother in law. Mm -hmm. That's what <laughs> I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> we agree with you. <laughs> 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 no, no, so what you are saying, though, is not only that financial decision-making and power is one thing, no. but that the power and the voice in the financial decision-making in the home is as important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I could Do you want to talk? Yes, I yeah? could understand the whole thing about, you know, when men just want to decide for you, you know, you meet, you get along very well, it's courtship, it's nice, you marry, you know, it's like things fall apart, the center cannot hold. Mm -hmm. So a lot of women hang in there simply because I don't, the fear of the unknown mm -hmm. or to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. So I'm just basically to, it doesn't matter how small you, you, you start, mm -hmm. but it's important for you to have, mm -hmm. you know, that congruence mm -hmm. in terms of, yeah. you know, how you feel, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, self-empowerment and, 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 and financial independence. And gender-based violence, we see that also where a lot of women stay in relationships. Mm -hmm. um, and it's usually because mm -hmm. of economic situations, yes. they can't afford to leave. Mm -hmm. yeah. no. So there's a lot of, there's a, the, the, so the economics is one part, but it seems there's a lot of social and emotional stress that go with finances, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah. Do we stress a lot about money? More so than others? Than yes. men? I think we do. May, may I just say, <laughs> I have a, not a client because she's a relative. Mm. Uh, wealthy, uh, so dependent on the decisions by the men in El Dorado Park. Mm -hmm. And every time I say, you know, I've reported this, you know, every time you bring, she'll say, bring the police, you report the, the violence, physical and psychological. The other day, he called her, because she called me Jezebel in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I found it was so offensive, I was mm -hmm. so angry. Mm -hmm. And in the U.S., we do, used to do, you know, the shelter for battered women. So I organized for her to go to, 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 to El Dorado Park or something, or to take and be with us. And, and this is a 74-year-old aunt with a 75-year-old man. Mm -hmm. They lived together for 28 years. But she, and then this guy says, that is why I was married three times, but decided never to marry you mm -hmm. because you're Jezebel in the Bible. You, you can imagine the psychological abuse. I've seen this with clients one to one. It is until women just basically, you know, believe in themselves and, and, and just say, this is it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to take it. So it, it's some of those decisions, even in the household, that are important. 
So there's a close connection then between our financial and our personal yeah. well-being. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Just no, no, because you are in investment and in mining and energy. Uh, we've talked about income because a lot of uh, um, we've got the topic is about money, but um, could we talk also about assets? Um, and building up assets because money is there for consumption, but how can assets advance and build our financial security and independence? Unfortunately, I cannot boast in some the bag lady when it comes to mining because uh, we do have platinum. We're setting up a mine in Sukukuni, and then the coal is in Musina next to Bay Bridge. Mm. But it's been a long and bitter struggle. It's very difficult for women, particularly in the mining industry, to get finance, to have access to finance. Mm. We started in 2004, we get our license, got our license in 2006, and then they usually say there's the brown fields. So it's very, investors are not interested when you have brown fields. Mm. Until such time, you hit a jackpot and get somebody else who will say, I'll do the initial prospecting for you, and they take it up to bankable feasibility. That's when you can start now. I mean, now the IDCs and some other companies are saying now, now we can buy this, we can partner with you and you dilute or you sell them your and all them. But it's very, very, it's, it's great. We're with Standard Bank, we'll, 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 we'll give you a lot of business. But I just want to say, it also too gives you the, the comfort. Mm. And for me, I follow my dream. Started a long time ago and I, say, I said, I'm not going to be going cap in hand asking for consulting work, and you get And I was once a consultant, I was asked to do your work, some job, and I charged 10,000 per day, and this guy said to me, break it down in terms of the 10,000, what did you do, and, your, uh, and that was it. I said, I don't want to come here, and to come to this Mickey Mouse guys, I'm sorry, and, 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 start, and start asking for, 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 for to, 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 to say, I said, I said guests from petrol from Sentin to Pretoria, and said, and then tea and coffee. And you know some of those things. That's when I decided also too, it was during the, the transformation of the mining industry. Well, that's when I, I, I went to Minister Pumzile said, we're on a trade mission in, in Hong Kong, 9-11, he said, I want to make what addressing the imbalances of the past in the mining sector. Mm -hmm. And I want gutsy women like you, Comrade Nono, mm -hmm. to come on board and, and let's see what we can do. So I formed a company and we started mm -hmm. and we formed John Desani, which is a Tsonga word, which means Dion Desani. Mm -hmm. Let us teach each other, let us empower each other. Mm -hmm. So that's where we started. Mm -hmm. And then, then they knocked me and then I started again, I didn't give up. Mm -hmm. And I started on and on and on. Perseverance is the mother of success. I'm, I'm very happy with where, where I am right now. Right. Thank you. We're going then, to, sorry. Sorry. The greatest advice I've ever received. Um, I had a very ill-fated starter marriage when I was 22. Yeah. And a friend's mother said to me, um, the best thing you need is a, it's a runaway fund. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. And I'm going to ask the women in this room, how many of you have a runaway fund? <laughs> yes, that's true. Every so woman needs a runaway fund, you know. Um, and so that's the thing. Is I think so. In in terms of it's, we do have this reluctance of building our own assets in our in our names. So assets in the households generally are in the husband's name, and they're not in our own name. Um, so we need to just watch those those things. Um, and of course, women still continue, Kim, you're right, women still continue to be paid for the same work less. Prof, I know you don't do that, eh? Right? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Prof, you don't do it. Prof is wearing his flower, but I must say, I'm like you when it comes to money. Every boss knows that I don't work for pleasure. I work for pleasure and money. Mm -hmm. And therefore, when it's a time for negotiation, I always, I say to him quietly that, Boss, if you want me to cry when I receive my bonus letter, mm -hmm. this is a number you would give me. <laughs> so that I want him to know whether I'm happy. I don't want him to think I'm going to be happy, you know. So I tell him, if you give me this much zeros and this number, I'll be very happy. So I think it's about don't, get, don't be underpaid. The information about what it is that women, uh, that for any job is available, 
you should know whether you are paid on the margin or whatever scale, mm -hmm. and you should negotiate. And you're right, the, the best, great opportunity to, to negotiate is upfront, but I mean, even when you're there, when you find information, don't get paid. And lastly, it's quite a contentious issue. You know, women do do more, double the work that men do. Mm -hmm. yes. um, at work, plus at home, mm -hmm. even most of us have, um, you know, have working spouses, but when we get home, generally, you have to start and do the second shift. Why? Don't do unpaid work, you know, because that's what it is. <laughs> that's what it is, unpaid work. Closing the curtains. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, don't do unpaid work. Just make sure that the work is split because it might sound like a small thing. When you come in and do your second shift, all of us have limited time. That's the time that you can take to advance your studies, to start a small business, to do other things. That time is very precious. So, in addition to a runaway fund, please don't do unpaid work. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to ask, um, just to bring the audience in, Kim, I know you want to speak, but let's take some questions and then um, if you want to make your point then. I just then. wanted to make one sure. very quick, short sure. point. Um, our publisher, um, Random House Straight Penguin, <laughs> has very kindly put books on sale, but in the, book, in the back of my latest book called Dealonomics, there's a recipe, a little easy mm -hmm. idiot-proof balance sheet for women to do okay. to calculate how much they should be paid mm. for doing domestic work, etc., etc. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 